So in today's video, we are going to talk about the assumptions of the cognitive approach. So the cognitive approach is all about information. What we do with our information. How does the information get inside of our heads? What do we do with the information when it's inside of our heads? And then what do we do with it afterwards? How do we get it out? And just to be clear, when we're talking about information, it's literally anything that the five senses can interpret. Anything from smell, sight, something that you hear, something that you taste. Like how did we process that information? And then what did we do with it when it got inside of our brains? And then maybe a week goes by and then we spit it out and tell someone. How, how does that even happen? And a lot of this has to do with things like memory. Memory storage, memory retrieval. How much information can you remember from your past six hours of studying psychology? How much can you remember clearly? And how certain can you be that the information that you remembered is the correct information? So we've all heard people say that our brain is like a computer. And one of the main assumptions of the cognitive approach is the similarities that we see of the human brain and computer processing. Another assumption has to do with individual differences in cognitive processing. Things like attention, language, thinking, memory. And these are all going to help explain our differing behaviors and emotions. More specifically, what do cognitive psychologists study? They study concepts like attention, memory, decision making, and language development. So let's put all this together. How could thinking processes or memory affect someone's emotion? Well, we all have specific memories of events. Think of phobias, for example, where we have an event that occurs and maybe there is some fear displayed, but over long periods of time, different experiences that are similar to that very first fearful experience can invoke specific emotions like fear and anxiety, even though we are not particularly in the same exact scenario. So some people might say, what is the difference between, let's say, a behaviorist and a cognitive psychologist? Well, a cognitive psychologist is studying things like information processing. I know I've said this a million times, but we can't see that. We can't physically see information that we are absorbing into our minds. And when I say absorb, where does it go and what do we do with it? Where maybe a behaviorist studies only things that they can actually physically see. Just to make it really clear, it's like having information come in, input. Then we have the processing of the information and then the output of the information. Input, processing, output. So we are gathering information from all these different senses. We are trying to interpret it. We are trying to process this information to an understanding. And then when it goes in, into our brain, where does it go? It does it depend on the type of information. We have different areas of our brain that stores different types of memory. We have navigational memory, long-term memory, short-term memory, just to name a few. And although we'd like to think that because we all have the same brain as humans, that we are all going to interpret information the same and that information is going to invoke the same type of emotions or the same caliber of emotions. That is incorrect. We have seen many individual differences among people of how information is processed. And the reason that cognitive psychologists say this happens, individual differences happen, could be due to memory capacity, personality, someone's mental health or abilities. Think psychometric tests. Psychometric tests are testing things that we can't see, like someone's personality. And these differences among people may be due to the environment, it may be due to genetics, uh, it could be due to both. Now, a lot of us have heard of CBT, which is Cognitive Behavioral Therapy. And this is more like a talking out of mental processes. So we are learning to take the word cognition, which means thinking or thoughts, and to basically rationalize them. So I hope this helps. I hope you learn a little bit more about what cognitive psychology does in comparison to other areas of psychology. Make sure to like this video and follow along for more.